Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna move this new gold lantana. Uh, it's in the way of some other things I have going on here. I put in a big uh, annual bed in this space uh, for this first season uh, in this house that I moved into in Raleigh, North Carolina about 10 or 11 months ago. I was concentrate on concentrating on landscaping the backyard and uh, out here I just wanted to, uh, to put some color out here for the season. Now I'm kind of converting it to what it's going to be permanently. There's gonna be a retaining wall going around this way right here. There's three abelia that need to go in this space right here. And this lantana happens to be the one perennial that's sitting in the ground in this section. Uh, the rest of it's going to be disposed of. But this I want to keep. It's grown a lot this year. Uh, it's probably, uh, I would say, eight feet wide at its widest point right here. At least seven feet wide at its widest point. So I just wanted to show you real quick. Um, about Sometimes you just got to be brave and move something. This isn't necessarily the best time to move it. It's in full bloom. It's in October. I'd probably normally wait till late winter, early spring, uh, maybe see some new growth coming on it in the spring to move a perennial uh, plant like this, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna bring the camera a little closer. I'm gonna reduce the size of it uh, dramatically, and uh, then I'm going to uh, dig it out, and I'll show you that uh, with the camera a little closer. So the few annuals that'll, that are near it, uh, I can just pull those uh, out of here just to uh, give me some uh, space to uh, to work or some vinca in here there's a little more in the front of it this, this thing has absolutely gone wild these vinca still look good but we're they're winding down it's the it's the end of the season now okay so i probably need to cut this thing down somewhere you know maybe maybe three feet wide uh something like that which is going to take off a lot of material and then try to get a root ball about equally as wide uh, is that so really i'm just taking my taking my shears uh and going around here i've got some drip irrigation under me i don't want to cut that for sure if i did it wouldn't be that big of a deal it's easy to repair but okay there we go so substantially smaller now i'm going to go in here and take a little more of this growth right off the top some of these flowers they're going to be a stress on it when I'm transplanting something like this, I kind of want to dig straight down. I want to take my shovel and go straight down around it to start with. I don't want to start angles under it like that, cutting roots too close to the, to the crown of the plant where, where the plant goes into the ground. I'd like to go kind of straight down and, let's, and I'll pull back just a hair. Okay, don't, not too, nothing too crazy. And I'm going to just do a full circle around this plant and I'm just going to go tear roots a little bit nothing crazy okay just like that this is not too bad digging here definitely had much worse than this these perennial plants like this will be um, easier than shrubs and trees for sure but a land this lantana if it was here for another year or two would get really difficult to get out of the ground they actually root very aggressively Okay, so from there, I mean, you see how much I loosened it just doing that. Okay, all right. So from here, I'm gonna go down and then start to go under just a bit, just cutting anything else that I've missed. I'm still going down at a pretty steep angle because I don't want to cut it at right under the crown by accident. I want to get as much of this root system as I can. Imagine I'm sliding, you know, maybe eight inches down up under that, maybe a little more. And I've now cut almost everything. Notice, I talk about this a thousand times on this channel. Notice I'm using this trenching shovel. There's, this is a much easier tool to do what I'm doing right now. And so many operations in the yard, this is an easier tool. I've taken, this one right here was about four inches longer than it is right now. That's how much I've used this thing over the years. But it works well, especially from a strength. You know, I'm probably strong enough uh, and heavy enough that I could use a full-size shovel out here. But if you're not, it's much easier to slide that into the ground. 
uh, than a full size shovel. So at this point, it's just a matter of seeing if I've actually done this. And I have, I actually made it all the way to the middle. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to, uh, the, the, probably the best thing to do in a situation like this where I've cut, got this perennial that's kind of a pancake like this, is to put it on some sort of sheet or uh, you can put, lift it into a wheelbarrow if you want to, but if you can just put it on a sheet and slide it to the new place it's gonna go or have two people carry it, you know, the sheet from the corner, um, that would probably be ideal. That would be, the less lifting you do on it, the less of the uh, soil you're gonna knock off the bottom of it. So what I'm gonna use is this snow shovel right here. Uh, it's about the perfect width um, of the uh, of the roots on this lantana. And I'm just going to try to grab it in a woodier place under here so I don't do any damage to it and just slide them, slide them under there, pull it back onto it, and I think it's completely free. Okay, so that's it. And then I'm going to tote it over to where it's going. So I have this spot uh, right here. It's near this turf. It's in the full sun that lantana likes to cook. We know how wide that thing gets, so I don't want to put it right out here on the edge because it's going to end up in the lawn um, all year. It's going to end up in the lawn all year anyway, but it'll be easy to cut it off occasionally. I've got some irrigation pipes right here. Two of them are the drip pipes for this zone, and this one right here is a solid pipe that runs over to that area we were just working in. So I don't want to cut. I don't want to cut these. So I'm going to just put that shovel there, slide it out. And I think that's pretty much golden. I've left it up just a little bit above that other, the original grade. Really, when something is this wide like this, you don't really have any choice but to get in there with your hands and uh, move the soil and move the soil around. So um, time to get time to get dirty here um, and move all this. Pretty much move all this by hand, and then tuck it in around and under these roots. This is a Mexican sage here next to it. Um, it doesn't bloom until fall every year. So this will bloom all summer and then sometime in the fall, that Mexican sage will start to bloom as this slows down. Although it hasn't slowed down this year. Now I'll get in here and just tamp this down a little bit with my feet. Um, Want to get rid of the air pockets not trying to stomp all the air out of it. Um, we still want air in between soil particles. Okay, we want to make sure I get all those, all those little air pockets, big air pockets filled in though. So the mulch that I had pulled back uh, before I started digging that hole, I'm gonna come back in here and respread it. Again, lifting the limbs, sliding a, just a little bit underneath it. I, I don't want to uh, over mulch underneath this at all but just basically putting this mulch back like it was i may need another shovel full or so i've got some extra um, i need to slide some right up under the front of that but uh, overall so um that's pretty much it it's not that um it's really more about being brave uh, than anything else i need to water this thing in well i've i've reduced the size of the top of it which should help compensate for the root damage that i've done if I'm seeing this thing wilt in the afternoon over the next week or two, then I probably will come over here and uh, reduce it even a little bit further. Ideally, like I said, um, when, this stuff, when this thing is waking back up in the spring, is probably when I would have wanted to move it, but sometimes you don't have any choice and you just gotta be brave. Go dig the thing out of the ground, reduce the size of it, cut the root straight down, then start your angle underneath it. Uh, lift it the least amount that you can so that you don't knock all the soil off the roots. Dig your new hole in, make sure it's elevated just a little bit. Don't bury anything that wasn't buried over there. So the crown of that plant is still exposed, I can see it. And then uh, mulch lightly uh, underneath it after you get it planted, water it in, monitor it. If, if the soil's wet and it's still wilting, it probably needs to be reduced a little bit more. But that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this video.